Welcome, welcome to the Dark Hills Real Estate Show where we do a recap each week to kind of see if anything changed out there in the market. And uh, honestly, uh, we had some changes in mortgage rates as I can begin to show you here and show you that they crept up a little bit. Let me move myself over here to 6.68. You know, it's nothing like a, about two and a half weeks ago we were sitting at 6.1 and so they've crept up. So why is that? Well, here's the 10-year uh, treasury here right now and you can see that it went up and it went down and went up and basically they're saying that you know while the recent trend has been unpleasant for the bond market at least it's logical apart from uncertainty related to election and forthcoming fed meetings data drives all to be fair data drives the fed as well thursday brought the week's biggest supply of data and the biggest reports being stronger than expected bonds logically tanked now today there's no significant data so bonds have no reason to tank. And what they mean by it, they're saying there were a lot of numbers that came out this week that were pretty positive for the economy. In order for the bond traders to think that the central bank's going to lower rates or and as they trade these bonds, um, they need bad news for that to happen. And we're not heading into a recession. The forecast of four to six rate cuts, as you know, is not going to materialize. And we're looking out to November 7th and saying, well, um, gosh, they might go down 0.25. They're definitely not going to go down 0.50. Now, you'll recall there was a lot of news that people were pushing out there that said, you know, we're going to be lowering rates to help with the election. We're going to be uh, seeing the rates change in the middle of September, and it's going to pull mortgage rates down. And, and a lot of that was just noise and a lot of chatter, and none of it came to fruition. So... If they were going to lower rates to affect the election, it would have had to have taken place way before a September Fed meeting. And the bond market would have had to anticipate that and uh, make moves for that to happen. So none of that stuff in the news took place. And I say that because there's just a lot of misinformation out there in news. And you really kind of have to step back and say, well, let me look at the numbers and see what's really happened. And, and in real estate market, it's slow. And when the central bank is tracking things, they're not paying a lot of attention to the real estate market. They're looking at the bigger picture, protecting the dollar, lowering inflation, making sure employment is still strong. Um, housing can take off or housing can tank and they're not going to make a move unless you see something really tragic happened in the financial markets like it did in 2008. Uh, they didn't jump in because housing crashed. They jumped in because housing crashed because of a financial calamity. So they came in to save the banks, not to save your house. So having said that, let's look and see what's going on right now in our market. This is the Crawford Demand Index. And so soon here, we're going to have to start asking ourselves, are we at the bottom? Um, are things going to turn around? We're starting to run into prediction season. Everybody telling you what 2025 is going to be like, and they're going to be as incredibly accurate as they have been the past few years, which means nothing. Um, so you got to look at things and you go, okay, it's, it's hard to buy at the bottom because the sentiment is so negative. Whenever anything crashes or goes down, you're like, do I really want to buy now? Gosh, can I sell now? Cause things look really bleak. And then after it starts turning back around, you go, Oh, I should have got in back then. And, uh, so I like to look at the charts and say, well, here's where we're at in relationship to where we've been. And this is the Crawford market index showing a number of 74 this is demand not the total index and it's definitely kind of in the basement but not compared to where it was back here before the big calamity so you can see that even back in the financial crisis you know the the, the market index went way below 60 down here but then it took off when things were terrible the demand went flying up well that was investors coming in and picking up all these houses that were given back to the bank and they were fixing them up. They had to do a lot of work because people walked out of there with everything. They were taking the ceiling fans, all the uh, um, appliances out and just leaving shells of houses. It was a really bleak and dark time. Some people didn't handle it well and we were not impressive as a uh, population. Here's active listings. Now, 
They've gone up and they've matched 2022 levels right here. I don't see, and we talked about it on our Thursday show at, at 5 o'clock, and I asked everybody where they thought they were going to go, and and uh, the, most of the group thought they would just go ahead and follow the seasonal trends. Only Jackie, she said, I think it's going to be flat. And I said, oh, cool. I don't think so, um, but we'll see. I didn't bet her a dollar, uh, but it's going to go down. Active listings are, are going to creep down as we get closer to the holidays, but uh, we're still only moving about 2,400 to 2,500 homes every seven days, and uh, that's that's really low. We'll, we'll get down to maybe 2,100 as you get down to Thanksgiving week. We do every time. We don't always get to 2,100, but um, it's, it's going to remain slow um if your house is listed don't pull it pull it off for the holidays hang in there because the seller the buyers that are out there are the ones that are out there for a reason they're either you know they've sold their house and they got to get something else or perhaps it's a relocation in their job and they got to find something so the serious people are out looking after thanksgiving your traffic will be way down but the ones that are showing up are have good intent they need to buy something What's curious to me is looking at average list price per square foot with all of these metrics being as low as they are. Why did this go up? Um, that's kind of surprising. Now, seasonally, I guess it does gets up when you get into October here, um, just like it did back here and slightly did there and did here. So I can write that off, but that's just list pricing. And sometimes you can call it wish pricing. Um, and th so that, that one surprised me. I thought we'd stay flat, if not start dropping on what people are asking for their homes. Um, but they didn't. And so it is what it is. And it, uh, it's, they're not going to get it. If they've come in too hot, they're, they're not going to get that price. Buyers are not in that kind of a mood, folks. And sales prices are not dictated by sellers. They're dictated by what buyers are willing to pay you for that home. And here is the listing success rate by calendar month. And you can see that uh, it took a little dip there. So it says it's at 70%. So they may be asking that for their home, uh, but buyers are not, they're not playing along. So they're saying, I'm happy for you. Um, I'm not going to give you that. Listings under contract are also, they're running kind of flat here. They went down a little bit here. They went up last week to 7,000. 6,900. This number is going to be different than what I show you on my seven-day moving average. I just pull that directly off the MLS. So there's always a difference in what the Cromford report shows. But uh, uh, it is what it is. Again, the, the trend is the same. It's kind of a flat line. So if you're thinking of listing, I know a lot of people are going to wait until January and because uh, nobody likes to list their home for the holidays. I listed my Fountain Hills home on Christmas Eve and had an offer on New Year's Eve. So it, it can happen, folks. And that was, I can't remember what year that was. I think it was 2014 or something. Um, but people are waiting, and they're waiting for a lot of different reasons. But the one, I saw an article here on Redfin that uh, once again says here that 23% of buyers who are likely to purchase their first home in the next year said they're waiting until after the election okay 26.1 said they're waiting to see if harris a housing affordability plan goes into effect into effect almost 16 percent are waiting to see if trump's housing affordability plan is enacted now let's talk about that for a moment the harris plan and i'm not going to compare the harris plan to the trump plan i'm just going to say politician a politician has come out said they're going to build a few million homes okay when uh, you're waiting so you're going to wait and those homes have to go through some sort of approval by congress to fund all this and th maybe they won't have anything to fund maybe they get in they just loosen up re regulations they give some tax incentives for builders to get them to start building well they still got to go out and buy the land they still got to get the permits they're going to be a year and a half two years out so are you going to wait two years? You might. You might have to. But you also have to take that with a grain of salt and realize that it wasn't that long ago that they spent $5 billion to put in charging stations for electric cars, and they have built eight of them. So 4 million homes, 
we'll see. Personally, I wouldn't hold my breath waiting for the government to come in and bail out housing because they're going to build 4, billion, 4 million homes. I also wouldn't hold my breath waiting for any kind of grant programs because they're going to have so many strings attached to them that you won't qualify. One of the grant proposals was out there that says that you can't make more than $44,000 a year. Well, what are you going to buy if your income is only $44,000? Probably not much of anything. And so as you're waiting for these government programs to roll out, I just think that's a long-term game. Nothing's going to change between now, the election, and January. What we're going to see is a, another slowdown going into Christmas. And then we're going to see an increase in listings in January. And people are always optimistic in January. It's a new year. They're going to read all the forecasts that housing is going to go up in 2025. I mean, I think it will. Um, only because it's as low as it's ever been. So we can't really get any lower, can we? Probably. We'll see. But I think we'll see some optimism that will show up. Uh, I don't think we're going to see a great improvement in rates as we get towards the end of the year and the beginning in January. But statistically, we always see more new listings hit the market in January than we do in Q4. Then that's followed up by the highest number of price reductions in February because the optimism was probably too high. We're seeing that in the list pricing today, aren't we? Like, oh, okay, well, it's October, snowbirds are coming, uh, the economy's still humming along, people are coming out here, let me ask this. Well, the difference between supply and demand is such that you're not going to get that. Um, people are not offering you your asking price. We saw that on the listing success chart, success rate, so those are the facts on what's going on out there and we're, it remains to be seen what happens with interest rates because if the economy isn't slowing down the central bank has no no reason to pull rates down any further because it's going to reignite inflation and that's uh, been done before that playbook has been written back in the late 70s and things took off and as you're waiting for inflation to come down um, it's got to be down for a while and it has to stick now i'm no macroeconomist, but uh, I think we're right on the edge where inflation could do anything. Um, it could turn around and tick back up. I'm also of the school that it's going to be harder to push rates down because of our, our debt. Our national debt is so high that uh, it's going to be harder and harder to pull interest rates down. But at the same time, the amount of money that we have to pay on interest to pay off that debt Right now, we're just, as a country, making the minimum payment on our United States credit card. Uh, rates need to come down to make that less painful. So there's a lot of spinning plates out there in our market. Arizona's still doing well. Unemployment is still doing well. There's still a lot of jobs coming to our area. There are There is some pain in the tech sector. Looks like Intel finally did announce that in Arizona they're going to lay off 400 people. That's a lot, but it's not as much. They were saying they were going to lay off 15% of their workforce, but that's their entire workforce. And most of that's probably taken a hit up in Beaverton, Oregon. Um, not so much Chandler. So um, that is still 400 jobs that are not around here. And we're seeing more and more tech jobs kind of taking a hit. One of my sons is in the tech field, and he said it's getting getting brutal out there. So he's a little nervous. And there's a lot of nervous activity in the market. That makes people sit on their hands and hoping that the government will come in to bail us out. I don't know. Let's see what happens. In the meantime, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, shoot me an email at rick at rickhelps.com. Take care.